So it's really um, an interesting story on how I came to M&A, Michigan Nonprofit Association. I had no idea at all what Michigan Nonprofit Association did or who they were, let alone uh, where they resided in, in Lansing and, and the Detroit office. So I was told about the opportunity uh, to be the director of the Metro Detroit Partnership Office, and I was told uh, several times, and I said, well, that sounds interesting. I don't know if that's for me. But I happened to be in a meeting um, in United Way, and I was uh, sitting there, we were all trying to figure out how to solve a problem around children who needed food. And these children were uh, individuals who had uh, very low wealth, and they were in schools and they were hungry, but they weren't getting food because they didn't want to be ostracized by being the ones who needed food. So we were all sitting in this United Way meeting in Detroit, and uh, we figured out, let's give every child food. Let's not ostracize any child. Let's give every child food. And therefore, a child could feel free about getting the food that they needed. And that just gave me such a rush when we came to that idea. And it was, it was fabulous. And I said, wow, this, cause this is great. I could do this all day long. I could solve these problems all day long. And the person sitting next to me was Penny Baylor, who at that time was leading City Year. And she said, you need to, you need to work for me. And I said, did I say what I was thinking out loud? And she said, you absolutely did. And uh, I said, wow, I never thought about working in the nonprofit sector. At the time, I was working in banking. And I was there serving in the capacity of, of a bank person on a committee and never thought that I could actually have a, a, a career, really, in, in the nonprofit sector. Uh, so um, long story short, really, uh, I got connected to a um, executive search firm, DHR International, through a friend that also heard me blurt out, I want to solve these problems. Uh, and she said, um, Dono, I, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Sid Kinney. And Sid Kinney actually um, uh, decided to meet with me. Um, the three of us, myself and another person, we're, we're all going to meet, but that person couldn't make it, so I'm in this conversation with this executive search firm, um, not knowing that they're going to be interviewing me for a position, and lo and behold, she was absolutely doing that. And um, she actually made me think about my whole life in banking for 20 years and giving that up for something, uh, for a career based on a feeling that I had. And uh, it was very scary because I worked in the bank for, for a lot of years and just at the proposition of leaving all that and going into a sector um, with an organization called Michigan Nonprofit Association that I never heard of, what would that mean for me? What would that mean for my family? I was also going to be married soon and uh, I had to tell my fiance then, I'm, I'm looking at changing my career, was that okay before we get married? And uh, he said that certainly that's fine, follow your dreams and uh, I was lucky enough to meet at that time uh, the president and CEO, Kyle Caldwell. And uh, he interviewed me um, because there was a process that was already in process. And he interviewed me, and they stopped the process to let me come into the process, which was amazing, but also scary, because then it forced me to make a decision. It forced me to make a decision to leave what, everything I knew behind to something that I didn't know at all. And um, I made that decision. It's been the best decision, I think, of my life. It's been the hardest decision and the best decision. Uh, of my life, and, and that's what really brought me to Michigan Nonprofit Association. Personally, um, as a leader at Michigan Nonprofit Association, in terms of creating this, this strong Michigan, this strong infrastructure, is really a legacy of being inclusive. I think that in, in order to broaden uh, the infrastructure, it really looks at the entire state of Michigan and what, what, what makes up that, who makes up that. Who should be included? I think I feel incredibly, incredibly blessed and quite lucky to be in the role that I'm in. I did not grow up nonprofit. I came from Detroit, <clears throat> from an area in the community that was impoverished, really. And I find myself in a position of, of leadership and in, in, in a position to be able to impact a huge system of what we, what we call the nonprofit sector, but from Detroit, um, you went to public school, and um, the first person in my family to graduate from college, these are the odds that you don't typically see in the role that I said. So I don't take my role lightly at all. And when I think about this, in, this notion of infrastructure is who else gets the opportunity? Not just to sit at the table for the opportunity, but what skills and values do they bring and being able to orchestrate that. So it's inclusive enough to really be able to make the change that we need to. And I think inclusion, 
equity, you could possibly say, you could say um, diversity. But I think inclusion is where I would really land for my legacy because I think it takes much more than we have right now that are going to be able to solve the challenges that we're, we're faced with now and, and in the future. One of